Thank you so much. You are raising very interesting issues for us to consider. Um, uh, next, we have Fontan Fontanarosa, Phil Fontanarosa. Fontanarosa. Thank you. I did not want to mispronounce it. Better thank you. you pronounce it. Dr. Lowe, distinguished members of the panel and colleagues, thank you for the opportunity to be here to participate in this important meeting. The speakers and I didn't plan this, but each of us are looking at a different guiding principle, so I hope you find that uh, useful. I also want to thank six of the seven speakers from the earlier session today because they all mentioned publications and the importance of publications. So I want to focus a little bit on clinical trial data sharing and scientific journals. You know, I, every, every place you go to give a talk, these are different. And I was giving a talk in Chicago last week, and I had the same thing, and I was pressing and pressing, and nothing happened. And I got home, and my wife said, what the heck were you doing today? I said, just giving a talk. She said, strangest thing, our garage door kept going up and down, up and down, all, all day long. Uh, only disclosure I have is a full-time employee of the AMA, which publishes JAMA. I also want to add a disclaimer. Uh, these views do not necessarily represent or reflect the views of any other scientific journal or any other scientific journal editors. I'm sure Dr. Drazen has uh, very strong views and very thoughtful insights on this whole issue. Also, these views do not reflect the views of any organizations of journals or editors, such as the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors. As I was viewing, reviewing these guidelines, I thought, well, since journals are at the heart of this and dissemination and publication is, what could journals do to help operationalize this and focus on guiding principles? And I thought increase in public trust in clinical trials would be the main place that journals could play a role. Over the past decade, there's been an evolution about ensuring trust in clinical trials. Uh, this wasn't always that way, even 15 or 20 years ago, but over the fat past decade, we've seen a lot of changes in trials with trial registration, with mandatory posting of protocols, with evaluations not only of manuscripts but of, of protocols, statistical analysis plans, and triangulating effects. We've seen increased rigor in statistical analysis of trials. We've seen more disclosures not only of conflicts of interest, now with a harmonized approach, but also on author contributions. The whole idea here has been to make trials more trustworthy and to merit that public trust. So how can journals help a bit? Let's go back one. So how could journals help a bit to foster trust in the event of reanalysis of shared trial data? Well, it's likely that public trust in trials would be enhanced with the potential for independent confirmation and reproducibility. It's also likely that to foster trust that these analyses will be based, must be conducted responsibly and with the same level of rigor that uh, the trial from which the data were based were conducted. In a thoughtful paper that was published about six weeks ago on rethinking reanalysis, a couple authors, including Dr. Dimitri Christakis, laid out some insightful perspectives, I thought, to help to ensure the value of reanalysis based on shared data. These were some of the principles. First, the methodologic approach for the reanalysis and new analysis must be explicitly stated and justified prospectively. Second, pre-specified protocols should be established and recorded such as in a protocol clearinghouse, prior to data release to new investigators. This raises the issue of whether protocols for reanalysis of shared data should be registered as well. Third, they suggest that methodological improvements for reanalysis must be recognizable, and differences from the original analytic approach must be well-grounded and substantiated. And fourth, importantly, they suggest that the presumption of bias arising because of financial, ideological, or political interests should be, be at least as low in the reanalysis team as in the original team, and ideally even lower. These authors, I think, rightfully suggest that with these safeguards in place, reanalysis of shared data could play a role in enhancing scientific discourse and trust, but embarking on these, embarking on these analyses without important caveats may jeopardize science and public health and potentially jeopardize public trust. In addition to these caveats, those who receive shared data must assume responsibility for and commit to making the results of their analysis public. You heard Joe Ross mention and Jessica Scott mention the need for a specific publication plan, and I think that's a very good idea for sure. Ideally, this would involve submission of manuscripts based on 
these reanalyses to a peer-reviewed journal for evaluation and review. I think journals will play an increasingly important role of evaluating um, and disseminating the reports based on clinical trial data. Evaluation of these manuscripts will be subjected to the same level of intense scrutiny as the original trial. Authors and the source of the original data certainly should be identified and appropriately credited. Clear disclosure of financial interests and other interests that may bias the analysis and presentation will be essential. It will be important to deter for journals to determine whether or not the report should be shared with the authors of the original clinical trial during the time of review and prior to publication. Certainly there are advantages and disadvantages of this approach, although in general the authors of the original report are probably in the best position to review and provide comments on the subsequent analysis emerging from their work. Journals will help to also help to determine the responsibility to evaluate and publish reports based on shared data of trials that were originally published in those journals. Um, most of the major journals receive thousands of manuscripts per year, have very low acceptance rates, so trying to determine the relative merits of the new analyses based on the prior reports of the trial will be an important consideration as well. What are some principles that will have to be operationalized as this moves forward? Here are a few overarching principles. One, respect for primacy. Data sharing ordinarily should not occur until after publication of the primary trial results in a peer-reviewed journal. The investigator team that originated the data, secured the funding, spent the time and energy to conduct the trial deserves respect for these efforts and seems to be entitled to a right of primacy publication prior to data sharing. There may be exceptions, of course, and details about responsible timelines and models need to be carefully considered. Second, policy transparency. Journal data sharing approaches should involve prospective author agreements when clear statements of the willingness to serve. Some journals have already developed these sorts of policies. Other journals are deliberating these policies. And I could tell you this issue is a key agenda item for our ed upcoming editorial board meeting at JAMA this May. Adjudication. Journals will really have a limited capability to adjudicate and resolve issues related to the appropriateness of requests for data or adherence with data sharing obligations. Journals really are not in a good position to arbitrate these sorts of issues, so guidance on principles and recommendations for best practices emerging from this committee will be very, very helpful. And finally, harmonization. Eventual development of uniform recommendations for journals may be helpful. Much like clinical trial registration and uniform conflict of interest disclosure, finding some common ground among journals, although possibly difficult with respect uh, to some details, will be helpful. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to participate in this important workshop and contribute to the discussion of the risks, benefits, and challenges related to the responsible sharing of clinical trial data. Thank you.